seventh. Count them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, I need to take my shoes off. Last week we had a uh, last week we had a technical difficulty. Yeah, YouTube didn't upload, so oh. we posted it on, on a Tuesday. But today is Christmas Day. We have our celebratory drinks. We have our celebratory Christmas cookies. Christmas cookies, yes. Uh, we're not going to talk about I Christmas though. Cookies. No, we're not. Not. Oh, these are my favorite cookies. They are awesome. I love them. I can eat a whole. Well, that's probably my problem. I've eaten too many tens of those. I, I mean, not tens like T E N, but te, how do you spell ten? T I N. T I N. Too ten. many tens of these little delicious Scottish butter cookies, you yeah. know, because they are fantastic, and there's no chocolate on them or anything. So nope. you think I'm eating healthy? They're they're guilt free. They are guilt free. Yep. Just like being Lutheran is guilt free. I love there it. It's All right. free being, and that's how we can talk about culture because we're guilt free Lutherans. I love it. I love it. Definitely. Even though I just said it, so self-serving to talk about something I love that I said. I'll scrub it out. We'll, no, we'll, we'll bunk it out. All right. So Shout it out. Shout it out. It's our Christmas episode, but we're not talking about Christmas. What are we going to talk about? Spoiler, we're going to talk about Spider-Man I mean, no, no Way, way Home. Oh, how, what would the official spoiler be is if you have been living under a rock for the last week yep. and haven't and gone to see Spider-Man No Way Home. If your family is forcing you to wait until Christmas Day... As your customary Christmas Day tradition to see a, a movie on Christmas Day. Then don't watch this one until after you see it. That's the basic yep. thing. And if you're like, oh, I'm still, I'm working my way through Marvel. And we're not even to Captain America Civil War yet. Then you know what I have to say to you? You're basically a terrible person anyway. So yes. I yeah. don't care if this spoils it for you. It's like I was talking to someone the other day and I said something about Harry Potter. They're like, oh, Dumbledore dies? I'm like, I, I really... And they're like, you spoiled that for me. Like, it's been around for a long time. So that makes me think of I'm something. I'm terribly sorry, but I, it doesn't really matter to me. This makes me think saying. of a Christmas relevant story. How old, and this is going to be a hotly debated topic, yeah. in Lutheranism yes. and in, in popular culture, Santa Claus in general is a hotly debated topic in Lutheranism yes. right now. Yes, yes. Uh, but how old should a person be when they are told by their parents about the lack of existence of Santa Claus. I have no idea what you're talking about. What are you talking about, Patrick? I'm so sorry. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that's, the, it. that's I it. Okay. I mean, that's the fun part, right? It's like I, I, I had my child come to me like, Dad, guess what? Like, was well, little Jamie Bear? So Jamie Bear's seven. I have not sat him down and said, "Oh, Santa is you know, all this." He goes, "I know it's you." I'm like, what do you mean you know it's me? I've seen you try to trip through the room to put a dollar under the pillow for the tooth fairy. <laughs> you know? Like, I remember I was in college, and um, Allison had this friend. I guess she's my friend, too. I mean, my friend. Yeah, my friend. I'm a friend of everybody. And um, we were having this discussion on, should you ever teach your kids that Santa... And she was out of it. Santa is not real. You should never... It's Satan Claus. I said, oh. She's like, but the tooth fairy's fine. It's like, wait a minute. Santa, jolly old Saint Nick eating cookies, drinking milk. Ho, ho, ho. Lovely. But I'm going to teach him about a tooth fairy. And so she and I got in a big debate. I made her cry right before class in college. Then I got everyone yelled at me for making her cry. Why were you so mean to her? Why did you tell her she was terrible and Jesus would never love her? And that, this is yeah, why. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think it just depends on, on the child and, and on the reality of... I guess the way we talked about it is... I just don't know. And that's how. That's I guess how I still. Sign. I bring this up because going back to the the spoiling and, and yeah. everything. Uh, You're like, thanks for that ten minute so, detour, Pastor. Hall. No, no, now no, we're no, back. No, that, no I asked <laughs> a so back when I was just getting out of youth group, I probably would have been a freshman in college. Mm -hmm. uh, my pastor at the time was uh, oh, was no. teaching confirmation class. And this young man, uh, he is a very successful person now. He has a beautiful family. I haven't talked to him in years, so if you're watching this, you know who you are. Um, he won't watch this, don't worry. No, don't worry, yeah. Uh, and Not our fan base. His, I mean, his family could. Who knows? Anyways, uh, leave a like and a subscribe in the comments. Um, but no, so my pastor is teaching confirmation, and he's talking about Christmas and he makes mention that obviously we know that Santa isn't real, and this fourteen-year-old boy—I love it—hand to heaven, just 
it absolutely devastated his what? world. What? And then his mom went straight to the pastor and uh, gave him an earful. And gave him an earful. Yeah. I'll do you. I'll one, never forget that. I'll do you one better. I was on Vicarage, and this is children's chapel, so it's for the Lutheran school. It's preschoolers all the way up to eighth grade. So there's okay. like two, three year olds in this chapel time mm -hmm. and it's the associate pastor doing chapel so you had a senior pastor associate and me so i would do him sometimes so the associate's doing it and he's talking and he goes in santa claus really mom and dad oh no and then he keeps going kids. and it was the best and you you heard this uproar like what and half the teachers are like what are you doing and he had this look on his face like oh, <laughs> oh no it was the best and i was like thank god because i just like threatened the children with death the week before they forgot what I did. Oh, that was like for months. It was the best. The teacher's like, "What are you gonna do today for him, there, pastor?" Yeah, you, you don't know? come back from that. You're like five year olds sitting there. Oh, so good. But yeah, so spoilers are just always, always so much fun. And it, yeah, with certain things, it's like if I tell someone Darth Vader is really the father, mm -hmm. you know, like you ruined that for me. Like it's been out since 1979. Yep. I'm not ruining anything for you. You're just a well. You know. This is this has been out for a week. Uh, TikTok so has had a hold of it since last Tuesday. Oh yeah, so, for yeah, sure. Yeah, TikTok's yeah. been spoiling it before it even came out. Yeah. So, so if it has not been spoiled <laughs> for you uh, by now, I suggest you uh, turn us back on tomorrow after church. Yep. Uh, and after you've seen the movie on Christmas Day, so spoil plenty of minutes there. Yeah, I'll put realize. a I'll put a red spoiler tag right here. Spoiler, spoiler. I don't know if I can make it flash. I'll try. I'll just do it. Spoiler, spoiler. All right, and then right. so then you yeah, go let's talk about Spiderman. So what was your favorite scene? Favorite favorite moment. My favorite moment was my wife hitting me twenty times because I nerded out so much. Yeah, the, so she smacked me a fair amount. I was me. telling uh, telling my friend uh, and fan of the podcast George. Uh, that um, he went and saw it uh, with his brother uh, that night, and we were talking about it late, late, late on uh, Friday morning, and uh, there was more audience reaction out of Spider-Man No Way Home than there was in-game. Oh, yeah, big time, yeah. Which actually kind of took me by surprise, because, I mean, in Endgame, you have where he gets, the, he has... Uh, Thor, hammer, where you have Thor, Thor like hammer. chopping Thanos' head off. Yep, that one. You got that. The got Captain America Captain hammer. Captain America, scene. yeah. And then Avengers Assemble, right? So yeah. you have the three like iconic con iconic things. moments in, in Endgame, but this it was constant. Oh, yeah. I mean, Matt Murdock. Yep. Uh, you have Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield popping we up. We have Doc Ock showing Doc up. Doc Ock. Green Goblin showing all up. Back to back all to back to back. Right in a row. Um, I mean, Jamie Foxx, I think, got more reaction uh, by himself in this movie than Endgame oh, did yeah. of, of all. Oh, yeah. Which which blew my mind. <clears throat> I was thinking Spider-Man would be black. You know, stuff like that. Yeah, so, yeah, for sure. You know, shout uh, out to the... Yeah, um, Miles Morales yeah. tease. And right. My favorite scene, I think, is actually the first Green Goblin fight. Yep. Um, that one. entire sequence leading, like, culminating uh, with May... And then him having yeah. to flee. I think that yeah. entire, like, from Spidey Sense, yep. which was a crazy Spidey Sense moment. Yep. Like, anxiety you know he's coming out, yeah. And all the way, yeah, that entire sequence is probably my favorite yep. scene. What about you? I love, and this is just me, is when they switch out the chip for Doc Ock. It's like oh, this. Oh, yeah. The switch clicks. Moment yep. where... You have the rage of the anger because the because because Spider Man's taken over the tentacles. Yep. But he's still furious. You can still yep. tell something's happened to him. And the moment he puts that in, it's like he's yeah born again. Same like, thing um, towards the end after the final fight scene where well not after the final fight scene but leading up to the final fight scene where Doc Ock actually confronts Tobey Maguire and yeah. Peter Parker. Yep. And he says, uh, you've grown up. Yeah. 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 It's good to see you, my boy. I'm you've trying. grown up. I'm yeah. Because to him, it just happened, right? Because where's yeah. my machine in the mm -hmm. beginning of it? So that's when he's been brought over to his yep. new universe is that part. Because he knows, he knows uh, it's who Peter Parker is. That's why he's like, you're not Peter Parker. Mm -hmm. So he knows that. But oh, you have that scene. You have... I mean, some of the throwbacks, you're amazing. Mm -hmm. you know, you're amazing. You're, yeah. so, you're the amazing Spider-Man yeah. type thing. Um, you know, just so many good parts. I mean, I, I was nerding out the whole time. But there's so much depth to it. 
Like, was. why yeah. don't you want to send them back? You have May saying it to them. You need to help these guys. Yep. Because it starts with Green Goblin, like, being mentally messed up. Yep. And you need to do something. Shout out to Will, Willem Dafoe. Oh, yeah. I mean, just I think he cements awesome. himself. There was already a conversation that he was probably the best comic <clears throat> villain um, dating back to Spider-Man 1 20 years ago now. But this solidified. But this completely solidified. Oh, yeah. His, yeah. his, his performance in this was amazing. Yeah. And just the, 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 what would you call it? Not fragility, but his uh, vulnerability yeah. in it is amazing. And just to be able to turn that off yeah. with a flick of a switch, too, in the same scene. Yeah. In some instances. Oh, yeah. Well, and I, I always hate the curing thing because that's a big thing with like, like, like um, superhero movies nowadays is don't beat the bad guy. Cure the bad guy. Try to fix the... And this yep. one actually, it didn't feel forced. Yep. It was like you have all the bad guys from this thing and you're... But then you have the Tom Holland Spider-Man really struggling with it. Then. Mm -hmm. And I like that, this struggle he had to cure the Green Goblin who's killed his aunt. Yep. And with Toby's like, yeah, I felt the same thing, but I still helped this mm -hmm. person. I So it's this understanding of sacrificial living really being there for someone even though they've done something terrible to you so going back to the sacrificial living i think that's really evident in the amazing spider-man story <clears throat> right uh so the last time we saw amazing spider-man was in the mid 2000 teens um amazing spider-man 2 de definitely was not the best spider-man movie it's probably the worst spider-man movie um, allison claims that spider-man 3 is the worst spider-man movie that's her oh man but she hates toby yeah and like the bad Toby. Amanda you know, will Toby. watch Spider Man movies. This is the first one she's watched. Oh since man. I forced her to watch the first Spider Man a couple of months ago. Yeah. Like yeah. Allison, yeah. she can't stand Toby. Um, Allison's like not a make believe person. It's my actual wife. Amanda's um, my actual wife. They yeah, exist. We actually have wives. It's awesome. Um, we don't just hang out with each other all the yeah. time. What are they doing? They're not doing the podcast. Well, they probably go and hold hands, eat cotton candy, and do, you know, larger man with beard stuff, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Silly bears. But um, but no, the uh, it's too fun. But no, so we have wives. It's it's fun. I have kids. It's it's real. It's real. See, oh wait, I have too many rings. You can't tell. Um, but the um, where was I? Yeah. So three to her is like when you have bully Spider Man. It's like this is just so. Stupid. Yeah, the emo, the emo yeah, swoopy hair yeah. Spider Man. Yeah, it's like it. That was a bad moment. Those were back in, in my Marvel emo Center. kid days too, so I really yeah, appreciated that. You, you related to you related. To <laughs> Once them. upon a time, I actually had <laughs> hair, and it was swoopy hair. So it was. I remember it. Yeah, I remember. Oh man. Now, so the the <laughs> redemption amazing story. Amazing Spider-Man too, though. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So I mean, I think you have Gwen Stacy die, right? And Andrew Garfield Spider-Man has now lived because the villains come back before they die. Right. But it's understood that the Spider-Men come back in where they currently Real time. are in the future. Right, yeah. right. Because it's alluded to that Peter Parker, Tony McGuire, Peter Parker, is probably married or getting married. Right, because, yeah, we worked it out, things like that with yeah, AJ. Yeah, it came around. Um, but Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man has been living in pain. Yeah, despair and pain the whole time. The entire yeah. time. And him eventually, I think, saving MJ... Right. Where MJ doesn't exist in his universe. Mm -hmm. um, kind of brings his story all the way around. All the way and you see the struggle there with him when he yeah. saves her. She has this like joy. I've been saved. And he, he just starts crying. Yeah, he, he breaks down because that's his... Right. He knows that's his redemption moment. So right. the what we originally kind of... We brought Spider-Man up for two reasons. Oh, uh, awesome. Christology in the movie. Right. Okay. And I think we can definitely touch on that. But one that we've alluded to um, on past episodes that we have talked about kind of diving into is cancel culture. Right. Keeping in mind, on the outside of this, we told you we would not burden you with politics. So we're not going right. to talk about the politics of cancel culture. No. Um, but the problems, I guess, surrounding cancel culture and what that does to us right. in our human state. And I think this is this movie is a good example of, of cancel culture and mm -hmm. the power that it has. I mean, when you look at it, Spider Man, Peter Parker, um, for is one of the heroes of you know of the universe. Yeah, right. Like Tony Stark in, in the MCU is gonna get the the golden statue. Right. Um, Captain America gets the Statue of America, literally. Yeah, they put the shield they on. They put the, the shield yeah. covering the the Yeah, the everyone loves Thor. 
you know, ruin the store. But then I think that that next person, because everyone else is tarnished. Yeah. Um, except maybe uh, Bruce Banner, Hulk. Yeah. But everyone else is tarnished. No one truly cares about Black Widow or Hawkeye. or Hawk Hawkeye. They or Scarlet Witch is definitely tarnished. Yep. So is Vision. Yeah. Um. So it falls upon Peter Parker then, right? Especially being the heir apparent. <laughs> so with all these great things that Peter Parker has done, the world so quickly yeah. turns. Yeah. Well, and, and people take sides. Like when he walks into the high school, you have the two teachers that made like the yeah the shrine, and then the one teacher's like, "No, I'm all about yeah. Mephisto." No, not Mephisto. Um. Yeah. No, Mysterio. Mysterio. Yeah, Mephisto, that's the Mephisto. I think is coming in Doctor he's coming, Strange. He's coming in. He's coming, he's coming in. in. He's coming in. Um, that's another episode. Uh, but yeah, you have that. It's like no, I I, I agree with him. It's mm-hmm. like oh, he's just a conspiracy theorist. Yep. But no, you have like Mysterio was right. When you look at it, it's like none of them get into MIT, and if you have anything to do with him, yep, you You're don't done. get in. Yep. And it's not until he actually saves the woman's life. She's like, I see that there's, you know, so if it benefits me, I'll bring you back in. Exactly. Which, you know? and, which it, realistically, um, if he hadn't saved her life, you know what I mean? Yeah. He would have never been given a second yeah. chance. No. I think, once again, with leaving all the politics out of it, I think cancel culture as a whole, this is a good... The movie tells a good story in the instance that it's everything is not what it seems to be. Right. Um, and that we should probably give a second glance um, to, I, I, honestly, to probably both sides of the story, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, take with all the villains with curing them. If you just cancel them, you send them out, there's nothing. Mm-hmm. Whereas with each one, there's something to redeem in yep. them. And, well, this even gets into, like, Alice and I got in a big discussion about this. She's like, they didn't actually cure them because these guys are still evil and wicked. And they're going to be evil and wicked. I'm like, kind of. But take take man. And this is always a problem with Lutherans. If I were to ask you, are we by nature sinful? Mm-hmm. You'd say yes, because that's what you hear in the confession. Yep. We are by nature sinful and unclean. We sin against you and by our thoughts, because that's what we do in the confession, right? Yep. But that's not true. We are not by nature sinful. Because if nature equals sin, then who by nature is sinful? Is Jesus. Mm-hmm. He's not by nature sinful. Jesus became man, but he's pure man without sin. He takes on himself our sin. Mm-hmm. Jesus did not in that way become sin. He became man to redeem right. man from sin. The better way to speak is not we are nat- naturally sinful. We are corrupted by sin. We have a corruption. And Christ redeems us, buys us back out of this corruption. We are freed from this corruption. Just in the way that Spider-Man freed all of these villains oh, so from their corruption. So going back to the Christology of it. Yeah. So he freed them from their corruption.